And towards the end of the year, you you shocked people with the revelation about your marriage and your personal life. <laughs> because I, I was, I didn't, I'm like, what? You know? Um, you, you shared about your wife, your first wife, I think, and all the challenges in that marriage. And also that you hadn't seen your kids since 2006 or so. Yeah. 2006, yeah. Yes. But two things happened for me. One, at the time this was hap happening, you were doing wisdom for singles. <laughs> so how were you dealing with this kind of toughness in your marriage, but still teaching singles and couples? Actually, I would say that my ministry for the relationship ministry was born out of my misery. Right. So I would say to people, um, you can go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Lumide Manor, the three parts is fully there. Yes. Because it's not something we can begin to dig back into. Yes. Yeah. But like I said, I got married in 97, and I realized, just like I said, and I realized that, wow, you can be honest, sincere, and sincerely wrong. Mm. Mm. You can be naive as a result of religion. Mm. You can just think that, oh, I'll just pray. Love will conquer. I will pray about it. And so, so when I began to realize, I'm like, wow, how did I enter this thing? Mm. And like I said, if you watch the video, from wedding day, she walked away from the wedding. Yes. So really, so from day one, I already knew that. Ah. So I'm now like, how can I help people not to enter? Right, right. So if you, so everyone that was saying that, ah, where does he get this kind of wisdom yeah. from? How can, you know, the messages were like, wow. People were like, ah, because things that the church were not talking about. Yes. Blood group, genotype, investigation, you know, mental health, say, you know, all kinds of things that were like putting money together. Or is like, ah, yes. ah, nobody said, just God told me to marry you. No, I began to deal with issues that were like, hey, oh, I don't enter, make can help now, make can look enter, we can enter. So that was it. So it was like right. ministry born out of misery. Right. And so from the place of that pain, pain, because you see, the anointing comes out of the olive. When the olive is crushed, mm. then the oil flows. So I was going through a crushing, and that was what was releasing, you know, just let me help people, let me help people. So yeah. it's been, Wisdom for Singles, I, I, it became the largest singles music in Africa. Yes, yes, people yes. were coming, all it's kinds huge. of, you know, BBC, and all kinds of stuff were coming. Like, yeah. who is this guy? Yes. What's this, you know, stadiums were every three months, mm. stadium, 12, 15,000 people, yeah. different denominations. Even me, I wonder where all these people come from. People were coming, you will see deeper life that doesn't go, deeper life will bring people in buses yeah. to come and listen. You yeah. see Sele, you see Ernest, yeah. yeah. it was just an amazing because yes. I was, it's like go set people free and I was just doing that. Yeah, and it, it's, been, it's been a blessing to a lot of people. So it was on the place of what are the mistakes I've made? What are the lessons I've learned? What are the things I think people need to be conscious of? Yeah. And those are the things we're dealing with. And yeah. We've written so many books. Yes, about done that. so many things around that. Yeah. yeah. Just, I want to ask three questions about that and then people can go and watch. The, so, you know, you mentioned it now that on the day of the wedding, your wife left. So is it religion? You know, because they, you know, now in this generation, they say that's a red flag. <laughs> So was it really, you know, because one of the things, one of the most powerful things that came out of that was a re, a, a interrogation of a doctrine around divorce. Yeah. Yes. So was it because people have said divorce is a sin and you're a pastor that that kind of big red flag, you know, didn't, didn't make you stop the wedding or was it love or was it what? Okay. Well, uh, let me backtrack a little to why we did this series because, um, because mm -hmm. as a pastor, when your church becomes, when thousands of people are gathering, you have all kinds of issues. Mm. Even when you cast the net, you cut all man off. So you need to begin to deal with issues because okay, you are in nice. church and then you say, yeah. okay, so I needed to bring Bible, like I said, teach, I mean, yeah. teach. I need to yeah. teach people from Bible. Yeah. This is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible says. And that's what I did. So when Kingsley heard it, right. he called me up and said, man, can we do a recording so that we can have it for posterity yes. as like a school that people can go to? Yes. And I said, wow, let me pray about that. Because mm. if I'm going to have to do that, then I have to talk about what I've never spoken about. Mm. Because mm. God told me to keep quiet, and I've kept quiet mm. for 19 years. Yeah. 18, 19 years. So if I have to now talk, I have to go back there. I need to check my spirit to be sure that this is something I need to do. Mm. Because my own thinking, well, God told me to keep quiet. And then after that, of course, life moved on. But I wanted full restoration. Mm. Because I've not seen my kids. So if I go and see anything now, I don't know where the state at which I don't want to say anything that will affect them negatively. Yeah. So I needed to prayerfully look into that. So my thinking is, okay, before I'm 60, they will be back. You know, I will believe God. Oh, I'm not about that. But all those things are not. Just, I just, oh, God is in control. I've left that. So I've written my memo, right. you know, the secret of my journey. Right. And uh, there are two chapters already on yet to be written. There's a chapter called The Dark Ages. Right. I've not written about it. And there's a chapter called 
the, 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 like the fulfilling the second trial or the final. Right. So those things were, so I'm waiting, okay, if I'm 60 and they're not bad, then I'll release it. Right. So that's why I'm like, I have to be releasing yeah. this thing now that I'm waiting. So I thought that, so when I prayed about it, I felt mm. led that number one, it was the right time mm. to say it, and number two, that was the right platform. Mm. Because you know, in the world we're living right now, yeah. You have to be careful yeah. who you share your story with because yes. we clickbait yes. and nobody's just looking for likes and follow yeah. and make money. They just want to cut and so, so and that's why we did what we, we did. did. Yeah. So to now go back to answer your question, which was also answered yeah. in that, it was a function of the fact that I know that God hates divorce mm. and I don't believe in divorce. Mm. And I believe that I knew what the problem was and I can solve the problem. But you can't help somebody that doesn't want to be helped. Mm. So that was the issue. I'm like, I know it's in the, you have mental issue. We can help you. You need psychotherapy counseling. Mm. But you think it's prayer. Oh, yeah, because yeah, you mentioned that she was a prayer warrior. Ah, so I say it's not prayer. Because yeah. the one thing you need to understand, you are a spirit. Mm. You have a soul. You live in, in a body. body. Now, the same way you have physical wounds, mm. you have emotional wounds. And now physical wounds are visible. You can treat them yeah. with the tall with uh, antiseptic and all this and take drugs and uh, over a time it will heal mm. but emotional wound also needs treatment mm. Mm. but the treatment for emotional wound is not prayer and fasting do you understand now it's therapy so we need to take you back to where the pain came from where the things came from and really take you back to trouble because a lot of people are out there they are traumatized yeah. they are hurting people hurt people yeah. they are they are still locked up in their experience locked up in their past. So I knew I could solve the problem. I said, come, you need, I can help you. Let me take you through this therapy. Scene. Let me take you to, because I've studied, you know, my back to 95. I've studied all these things. I said, look, I can help you. You need help. No, don't tell me that. I don't have any problem. I said, you have a problem. This is not normal. This is not a normal behavior. Hmm. The human being does not behave like the next thing you don't slap, you don't carry knife. The next thing, I'm sorry, I don't know what came over. I said, that thing will come over you. Now you won't deal with, no be demon. Hmm. But so that was so that was my own thinking. Thinking, okay, I can help, but of course, yeah, I realized that uh, you cannot help somebody that does not want to be helped. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the other thing that came out of it was also, like I said, teaching people about divorce. You know, what has the church historically taught people about divorce, and what did you learn from the Bible that was different from what Christians think divorce? And you know, um, number one, unfortunately, um, there's so much hypocrisy in the church. Mm. And there's so much imbalance and extremism in the church. Right. And depending on the water you drink and the, where you, the flavor of church that you have, mm. you either see God as a God of judgment or you see God as a God, God of love man. or you see mm. God as a God of balance. Mm. So for many people, they just pick one part of scripture and form a doctrine around one part of scripture. God hates divorce. Yeah. I can guarantee you, many people that say that I've never read that book, not even, they have never read the, that book from beginning to the end. They just speak a verse. Yeah. And there is context and content mm. in everything. So God hates divorce. Mm. So if God hates divorce, does he hate the divorcee? Mm. So if God hates divorce, he also hates lying. So it's divorce and lying. Sin is sin. There's no big sin, small sin. But in church, we categorize things. So that is the first issue. Then, like I said in the broadcast, which I really advise people to go. Yes, I do. You see, there are different people when it comes to the Bible. In the biblical exegesis mm. is the careful systematic study of the word of God. Yeah to discover the original intended meaning, mm. so as to rightly apply it for the noun. And in biblical exegesis, we have those we call biblical literalists. Yeah. They take it literally. Yes, we said that. So I, I take it, if I don't see it in black and white, is it there that you should brush your teeth? Is it there that you should comb your hair? Is it there that you should wear socks? It's not there, so why are you wearing socks? Why are you brushing your teeth? So they are biblical. And then we have what we call selective interpretators. They select anyone that will work with what they want to believe. Then we have those that are people that study the world to do exegesis, which is what we need to do. So when you study the Bible in the beginning, when they came to Jesus in Matthew, they said, this is he said, no, 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 in the beginning it was not so. So according to the original plan of God, man and woman must be together for a lifetime. Mm. But when you look at the time of Moses, mm. when someone um, gets married, Mm -hmm. And the man does not like her. Say, I don't like your food. I will just send her away, which is called the putting away. So when they now came to Jesus, mm -hmm. he said, listen, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, said that you should give a woman that you don't love a bill of divorcement. Yeah. But in the beginning, it was not so. so. So that means that he's saying, look, instead of abusing this woman or abusing this person and messing up their life, 
give them a certificate of let them go so that they can remarry and move on with their life. So, but in the beginning it was not so, but if you let them go. He now said, he said, but anyone that puts her away, except for adultery. Now, people now mistake the putting away. Putting her away is separation. You separate her without giving her bill of you know, divorcement. He that now put her away, you now go and marry his adultery. That means if you put a woman away, you have not divorced her, you have not given her the document for her to be free. You now went to remarry. You have two wives. Do you understand? That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. So he now brings out things that can make you to, so those are all the things we're trying to help people to understand. Because yeah. see, in life, there are what we call the interplay of law. Mm -hmm. There's the law of life. Mm -hmm. There's the law of redemption. There's the law of marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, in this law, the law of life is superior. Because anything that will affect your life, you will even be alive to marry or be alive to serve God. So when marriage wants to affect life, you separate so that you will be alive to come back and deal with the marital problem instead of staying in there and dying. Hmm. So we're just trying to help people understand all this so that not that, because the, the, the topic was, is divorce a sin? Yeah. It's yeah. not a sin. Yeah. It's not the ideal, but it's not a sin. Right. So if you find yourself in it, life happens, you move on, mm -hmm. but that should not be a license for you to now become as if everybody should know. Because today now we have a lot of people that are not, they, they are not ready to pay any price. Mm. Every time they're out of here, I can take this. I'm like, no, 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 no. If you want to survive in this world, you will take things. You would, if you want to survive in this you world, take things. you will take things. <laughs> Even in your business, in yes, your career, yes. if you don't study well, if you, know, you will, you will not survive. So yeah. you have to take it. We need you to subscribe, yo. And the reason is simple. The kinds of conversations, the kinds of words that we construct with our conversations on with Chude are driven by a vision of the kind of world I want to see, you know. You are the most important person in this entire ecosystem. You subscribe in monthly. So do go ahead, subscribe. Ask somebody else to subscribe. Advise somebody else to subscribe. Refer to someone to subscribe. It matters, truly. Thank you as we continue to be human together.